get the volume of a cone, what we do is we look at a line, a straight line passing through the origin of the XY plane. We mark out a distance h along the x-axis. This h will become the height of the cone. And we go up this distance here, which we're going to call r. Now, what we do is we rotate this line about the x-axis. So if you can imagine rotating this line about the x-axis, we will generate a cone whose height is h and whose radius is this distance here, which is r. So h and h and r are two fixed values. Now, in order to get the volume of revolution generated, we need the equation of this line. The equation of a line through the origin is just y equals mx, where m is the slope of the, of the line. In general, the equation of any line is y equals mx plus c. c is the y-intercept. But if c is 0, as it is here because this line, the y-intercept is 0, the equation just becomes y equals mx. But we can get the slope of the line in terms of the constants r and h. The slope of any line is this vertical distance here, sometimes called a rise, divided by the horizontal distance, which is sometimes called a run. So the vertical distance are y2 minus y1, if you like. Here is actually r, and this horizontal distance is h. And these are both positive numbers. r is positive, h is positive. The slope of this line is positive as well, because it's an increasing function as x increases. It's go line going in this direction is positive slope. Um, so the slope is just r over h. So we can write the line as y equals r over h times x. You can then look up this formula here, which I will explain in another video. Um, I'll just apply it here. It's pi times the integral of y squared with respect to x. And here we're integrating from x equals naught to x equals h. So we're integrating with respect to x, we're integrating y squared, where y is the, uh, the function. Here it's y equals r over h times x. So here we get pi times the int integral from 0 to h of y squared. So we have to take r over h times x and square it. Well, if we do that, we get r squared over h squared times x squared. r squared over h squared is a constant. That can be taken out. So we're integrating x squared with respect to x from x equals naught to x equals h. To integrate x squared, we add 1 onto the power to get x cubed. Then we divide by the new power, so we have 1 toward. Um, we apply our limits. We plug h in for x. So we get pi r squared over h squared times the toward h cubed. Then we put down a minus sign, plug in 0. But when we plug in 0, this just becomes 0. Now, h squared divides into h cubed to give h. So we have pi r squared h over 3 or 1 third pi r squared h, which is the familiar formula for the volume of a cone. The interesting thing about a volume of a cone is that it's actually 1 third the volume of a cylinder with the same radius and the same height. Um, a cylinder could be generated by rotating this horizontal line about the x-axis, and we would end up getting pi r squared h, actually but the cone is actually one third the volume of the cylinder. To get the volume of a sphere, what we do is look at a quarter circle. Now the equation of a circle centered at the origin, as you've seen in a previous video, is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. So it's centered at zero, zero. This comes from Pythagoras, as I've explained before. We can rearrange this to make y the subject. So we get y squared, equals r squared minus x squared, or y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. And we will be taking the positive square root here, but actually it doesn't matter. If we take, well, if we take the negative square root, we would be looking at the lower half of the circle. Um, but that doesn't matter too much here, actually. Now, <coughs> what we need to do is apply our formula. We want the volume of revolution about the x-axis. So it's pi times the integral of y squared dx. So you can just look this up. And we're integrating from x equals naught to x equals r. So you can imagine 
revolving this quarter circle about the x-axis, you will generate half a sphere or a hemisphere. So if we can work out the volume of the hemisphere, we just have to multiply by 2 to get the volume of a full sphere. So we have to do this integration. So we need to take y and square it. Well, if we square the square root of r squared minus x squared, we just get r squared minus x squared. We have pi here as well. So this is actually quite a straightforward integral. r squared is just a constant, remember, it's fixed. It's the radius, it doesn't change. x is what varies. When we integrate a constant with respect to x, we get that constant times x. When we integrate minus x squared, we get minus a third x cubed. It's quite straightforward. And our limits are from x equals naught to x equals r. So we plug in x equals r first. So we have r squared times r, that's r cubed. And we have minus one third r cubed. That's the result of plugging r in for x. Then we have a minus sign. Then we plug 0 in for x, so we write out all of this again with 0 in for x. But of course, if we put 0 in for x, we end up getting pi times naught. Well, that's just naught. In here, we have 1 r cubed minus a third r cubed. Well, 1 minus a third is 2 thirds, so we have 2 thirds r cubed. So the volume of a hemisphere, which is what we've just got by rotating the quarter circle, around the x-axis is 2 thirds pi r cubed, which means that the volume of a full sphere is got by multiplying 2 thirds pi r cubed by 2. That's 4 thirds pi r cubed. It's an interesting fact that um, this formula was discovered over 2,000 years ago in Greece um, without doing integration. In this type, what we call integration nowadays, and the methods we use were not known in ancient Greece, but somehow they were, I think it was Archimedes, was able to derived this formula 